All right, here we go again. I have my neutral object as illustrated by an equal number of quarters and uh, pennies. And what we're gonna do with this is use this to show why neutral objects are attracted to all charged objects. All right, so I have my balloon here. Now, if you'll remember, we proved that when the balloon was rubbed on my head, there it goes again. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. That the balloon became negative and my hair becomes positive. Um, we proved that by showing that the balloon repelled from something that we knew was negative. Okay, so now if I were to bring the negative object close to, but this time I'm not going to touch this neutral object. Right, because if I touch this neutral object, what would happen is the charging by conduction. I would end up with electrons leaving the balloon and transferring over to this object, and then they would spread out. Actually, if this is a, a, a conducting object, they would spread out all my excess charge um, all over the surface of this object if they could, right? So that's what would happen in a charging by conduction, right? I touch this, excess charge goes from this, which was a high concentration of electrons, to this, which was an equal concentration of electrons and protons, and there you go, and then this thing would have excess electrons and would be negative as well, okay? But that's not what we're gonna talk about here. What we're gonna talk about is what happens when our negative object is brought near but doesn't touch this object. If it doesn't touch, therefore the electrons in this can't transfer over. In charging by conduction, we said that the objects had to touch. There needs to be a pathway for the charge to get from the charged object to the uncharged object. There's no pathway. It's, not, it's only going to be in very rare circumstances that excess charge will jump through this gap. And we'll talk about that later. But that's what's happening here. So just because they're not in contact doesn't mean that the electrons of this object don't experience a force from these uh, excess electrons here. Remember, we said this is negative, meaning that there's a large concentration of excess negative charge here. That means that these electrons start feeling repelled by that. And if it's close enough and that this charge concentration is big enough, they might feel more um, repulsion than they do attraction from their local uh, proton partners. And what ends up happening is that some of these electrons start moving over <clears throat> through, the, through this device because they want to get away from the excess electrons there. So maybe this is what, what happens. Okay. So now even though these electrons are more tightly bunched here um, and they're repelling, that's still only as strong as the repulsion here, which is why they pushed away. What you'll notice now is, first, this object did not change the total number of protons nor the number of electrons that it, that it has. In other words, this object did not become positive nor did it become negative. What's happened here is the electrons reorganized or redistributed on this object, right? So this process, which I'm talking about here, is not a charging process because there was no transfer of electrons from one object to another. Now, if I were to take this away, these electrons would be all like, hey, we're all overcrowded again. There's no reason why we're being forced there, and they would go back uh, to where they came from. But let's not do that yet. <clears throat> so, notice here what happened. A negative object pushed extra electrons in this direction. So you'll notice now that I have protons here without electron partners, meaning this side of this object acts like it's a positive thing. What do positives and negatives do? They attract. So this object, which is holistically neutral, because of this process where some of the electrons are pushed away from one side of it, now it looks like it has a, a positive piece and a negative piece, but the positive piece is close to this negative object and they attract. That's actually what's going on 
uh, every time a neutral object is brought near a charged object or a charged object is brought near a neutral object, this redistribution, which causes then the attraction between the side of the object closest to the charged object. Um, this concept is known as polarization. So I'm going to write some notes about this now. Okay. Uh, like I said, when this got moved away, what would happen is that these charges would all flow back to what they thought or where they were before to a distribution that allows them to minimize the distance between excess or between the electrons, right? And so there you go. Boom. It remained neutral. So let's define it. So what I've got here is a process called polarization, right? And the first and most important thing about polarization is that this is not a charging process. And the reason is because no electrons are transferred from one object to another during this process. Okay, so that's going to be the key bit. It's not a charging process because electrons are not transferred from one to another. So if that's what uh, polarization is not, what is it? It is the temporary redistribution, redistribution of electrons on an object due to uh, well due to the presence whoops of a strongly charged object brought near. Once again, brought near, not touching, not touching. So what does that look like? Once again, if I have a neutral sphere and here it's a strongly charged green strip, what ends up happening is some of the electrons from this side are gonna go over here, boom, 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 right? Leaving this side feeling like it is positive because it has, it has missing some of the electrons that got pushed over to the other side. If I have a positive charged object here and my object, what happens here is electrons from one side will be drawn over to the other side, making this side feel more negative and this side is temporarily more positive. Um, and that's what happens. And if I move these away, the electrons go back to where they were, right? So this thing started neutral, and during this process, it remains neutral. Just the charge got redistributed on it. And notice here, the, the positive end of this object is near the negative thing that caused it, and the negative end of the object is near the positive thing that caused it. And that distribution is the reason why, so because the side of the polarized object has the opposite oh, sign as what polarized it, it attracts. And that's the reason why all neutral objects are attracted to all charged objects. So I'll show you some demos where all neutral objects are attracted to all charged objects uh, in a separate video.